Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to Twisted Serenity. Thanks for clicking on my channel. So today I'm going to be showing you guys how I took some inexpensive items and turned it into some spring decor for your tier tray. I hope you guys enjoy and remember if you like what you see, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and turn on that bell notification to be notified when I post my next video. So with that being said, sit back and relax your craft with me. Let's get started. Okay, so for our first one, I have these little mini like clay play-doh containers of course my son got the play-doh everywhere and i went to throw away the play-doh and i was gonna throw away these containers but i was like nope i was like let me reuse them and turn them into something cute so at first i paint over them with some ivory color chalk paint and once i painted them i felt like it was like a little i don't know they were like too plain not enough texture or anything like that so I grab some chalk paint and some baking soda and I make a little combination. So I paint over all our little pots. And then once I have them painted, I wait for them to dry completely. And then I take our baking soda and chalk paint combo. And then I'm going to paint over them again. But the second time that I paint over them, I'm going to dab my brush up and down. And I felt like that gave them more texture. I do paint the rim and I paint the inside of them as well. Because they, I felt the more layers I was putting on them, they were still very they they weren't so they were so transparent that you could see right through them. So I did paint the inside just to make sure none of that Play-Doh label showed through. So once they were dried, I took some hazelnut chalk paint and I just did like a dry brush around it just to give it more dimension. And if I felt like if I went a little too heavy in some spots, I just took. Um, the ivory color chalk paint and just painted right over just to give me like a nice like a little pot that's like rustic and dingy and dirty <laughs> if that makes sense so I have a little strip of muslin and I use my scissors make a little slit and I rip it because I want the edges to be frayed and I'm basically going to use these as labels for our little pots so I didn't have small enough stamps so I decided just to weed out um, thyme, basil, and mint off of my Cricut. I'm sorry, cut out. And then I just laid them on the little piece of muslin. And then I just took some ink, like um, like the stamp pad ink. And I just brushed it in the stencil that I created for each one. Then I just cut those pieces of muslin into like three strips obviously for each label and then I just took some glue and I glued them on to our little pots and when I was gluing them on it did um smudge like the ink smudged a little bit because I didn't let the ink dry to, um, completely but I liked the way it looked so I just took my brush that I used for the stamping pad and I just did like a little dry brush around the piece of muslin which is our little label for our little pots I just love how these little pots came out and I can't believe we made them out of Play-Doh containers. So once I was done with them, I took like leftover greenery stems that I had. And I always save like whatever stems I have from previous projects. They always come in handy. I take Spanish moss. I fill up our little pots with some Spanish moss. And then I take our greenery stems and I just place them in each pot. And that was it for this one, you guys. Look at what we created out of basically something that was going to be trash. I love the way this came out. Okay, for this one, you guys, all we're just going to need is one birdhouse. I'm going to go in the middle and I'm going to paint it with this color that I made. I just mixed some agave by Waverly, some celery, no, I'm sorry, some moss by Waverly, and then I mixed some type of blue by apple barrel i'll link it in the description box now this color that i'm using right here is the color that i'm going to use basically th throughout the whole video so i paint the middle of it and once i paint the middle of it i went in to paint the roof the the roof of it and i started off with the color fawn by waverly and i didn't like it it didn't pop so i decided to take apple barrel chestnut and i love the way that this popped more so i painted the roof the base and the perch I think that's what it's called. <laughs> now, the inside was just, you could see, if you looked at it directly, you could see the unfinished wood. 
So I just took some black paint and I just went in the inside and just painted that up with some black paint. Now, I just wanted to give a little something extra. So I cut out with my decal, Hello Spring. And you see how they have like the different slots on the roof. I put Hello on the first slot and Spring on the, am I saying that? Yeah, Spring on the second slot. Is that even a word? I don't know. I'm second guessing myself. Okay. And that was just a little extra to put on our little birdhouse. Now, to top it all off, I grabbed some Spanish moss. And I glued some Spanish moss to the front of our base. And that was it. I love how simple it is. But I love the colors and how it all tied in together. Let me know what you guys think. Okay, this next one, you guys, I wasn't expecting to love this as much as I do. So this bird I got from Dollar General. All these pieces from Dollar General, you guys, were 10 cents after Christmas. So make sure you guys check out your stores after the holidays because I'm guaranteed it's way cheaper than Dollar Tree, you guys. So the front of it was paper, so I just ripped that off, sanded it all up, and then I painted it with um, some white. No, I'm sorry. It was plaster chalk paint. And I do paint the front, the back, and then I just paint like the sides of the bird because the sides were white just to make it all the same color. Dollar Tree has stamps, you guys, and I've been having these for a while. And they're nice. I'm going to say they're nice. They're, they're nice to use on projects. They are nice. But I didn't want to use ink, and I didn't have like the color, obviously, I mean the stamping pad. So I mixed some acrylic paints together. And then I didn't have like a rolly thing, so I forgot that I had like this makeup roller. You're gonna see right now this makeup roller brush that I had from, I think I got from Dollar Tree a while back. It's supposed to be for your eyes. So I saw this technique that you could stamp with paint, and so all you have to do is roll your paint onto, I mean, roll your roller onto the paint, make sure it's not like a lot of paint, and then you roll it onto your stamp. And it worked, you guys, and I liked the way it came out. And so I mixed the color that I wanted. I, it was just like blue, as you guys see, like a blue, a light blue and a gray. I put it on my Dollar Tree stamping block, and I stamp it onto our bird. And it, it came out pretty cute. Now, I purposely did not put a lot of paint on the stamp because I didn't want it to be, one, smudged, and I didn't want it to be too dark. You see how, like, that little flower is? So... The less paint, the more I want it to look kind of like distressed and not too dark. So I try to use less paint as I could use. So I continue this all around with the different like floral stamps and like the like the leaves. I just stamped the entire bird all around. Now, when some spots were dark, like after I was all, it was all completed and dried up, if I found like some of the blue was too dark. I just took a paintbrush with the plaster chalk paint and whatever was on the paintbrush left over from when I painted the bird. I brushed over those spots that I found that were a little too dark. To give this beautiful bird a little bit more dimension, I took a little bit, I started off with hazelnut and I started to do like a dry brush around like the edge of the bird. So I left the hazelnut on there, but I wanted a more like rustic look, like distressed look. So I switched it over and I took some antique wax and I did a dry brush around the edge of the bird with the antique wax. Now, once that was completed, you can leave it exactly like this, but I felt like my little bird needed like a little something more. So I had these wood pieces. I think these are wood pieces. I think they're from Dollar Tree. I'm not even sure. And I felt like it needed like a little wing. So... I was just seeing which one was the right size. I choose my little wing and I paint it with my Apple Barrel blue bonnet paint. I just dry, like dry brush some antique wax in the plaster chalk paint. And then I take our wing and I glue it onto our bird. And I love the way this came out. I love that I tried something different. And I honestly love the result of it. Let me know what you guys think. Okay, so we're going to grab this chalkboard piece from Dollar Tree. I'm going to flip it around. I'm going to paint the inside of it with some white chalk paint. This is one of those pieces, you guys, that I told you that 
Thank God I don't have a laser cutter machine because I try to think outside the box to give you guys projects that look like you guys can make with laser cut pieces without having a machine. So I paint the inside of it and then I'm going to paint the border of it with the chestnut by Apple Barrel. I am trying to keep all the colors since it is a tear tree set. I'm trying to keep all the colors coordinating with each other. Now I want to grab the wood ornament watering can. Dollar Tree carried these last year, you guys. All these pieces that I have are from last year. This watering wood can that I believe was a garland. I take that piece out and then I cut the little tab on the top of it. And just use my finger sander just to smooth it all out. Now I'm going to paint it and I'm going to paint it just mixing those paint colors that I used in the previous DIY. And then I'm going to just add some detailing on the watering can. I draw a heart out. I use my paint pens to, tra to trace the heart. I color in the heart with some pink sky by Waverly chalk paint. I use my white chalk paint just to give it some like not really shading just like I want to say like kind of like a dry brushing look all over the watering can and I also use my black paint marker to do some outline on the watering can as well just to make it I, I feel like just pop a little bit more so I have the watering can done and I wanted it to look like there was little flowers inside of it so I have these little wood flower cutouts and I believe the little wood ones are from I think these are Dollar Tree ones yes these are Dollar Tree ones I take two of those out, I paint them up, and then I wanted one large watering, I'm sorry, one large flower in the middle, but I didn't have a large flower that had a stem, so I cut a piece of a craft stick, I painted it, and then I had cut some wood leaves off the mini wood flowers to use as the leaves as, to use the, as the leaves for my big flower, as you guys can see I'm doing. I had some wood letters, I bought a big pack of wood letters like last year and I still have so many letters left over they're very like very many and I leave those as the unfinished wood I didn't want the want to paint them so I just use my hot glue for the watering can and then I use that crazy like gel glue from Dollar Tree I love using that stuff for like little embellishments and I just started attaching everything I put the flowers inside the watering can um as you guys can see, I'm assembling my large flower, and then I just glue on our wood letters. And that is it for this one, you guys. And we made a piece that looks like one of those like laser wood cutout pieces, and we made it with Dollar Tree products. Okay, so for our next one, I had fun with this one. I have this. This is one of those trucks they had during Christmas time, and the tires are broken, and the light doesn't work no more. I didn't throw it away because it's a pickup truck, and I was like, I could remake this somehow. So I pop off the tires, the two tires that are left, and then I'm going to go in and I clean it all up first because it was in one of my storage boxes. I use some alcohol wipes with some baby wipes, clean it all up. And then since it is plastic and before I painted it, I am going to sand it up a little bit since it is plastic. So when we paint it, the paint sticks to it. Now I have this paint by Folk Art and it's like the enamel glass wear type of paint and it actually worked really good. So I it is white so basically I'm going to prime our truck first. I paint the whole entire tra truck with this white paint and I go all inside it like all around it. When I get to the bottom of the truck you know the white piece at the bottom where you have to change out the batteries for the light. Well, that piece, I didn't want that piece to be on it. I wanted this to look like a rustic truck to fit the decor. So I do take, all, and that's only held on by glue, no screws. So I take my heat gun and a knife and I just pop that piece out and I leave it out. So in order to pop out the headlights and the plastic piece of the windshield where in the windows are at, you need to take out that bottom piece and it's just held up by glue. So I'm just using my X-Acto knife and my blow dryer just to remove those pieces to paint the inside as well. So I have it primed and I'm gonna grab that color that I've been using throughout the video. And that's the color, the base color that I'm gonna paint my whole pickup truck. Now I wanted my truck to look rustic. So I have this copper color by Folk Art. 
And so I'm going to basically, I'm going to paint the truck a good coatage of the copper color. Because I didn't know how I was going to do this at first because I was brushing it on there. But I didn't like the way it was looking. It was just looked like it was just sitting on the truck. So I start off by painting it on the truck. I paint like the the bumpers and oh, what is that called? I'm lo I forgot. I'm like losing the train of thought. So I leave it like that. I know I want where the is it hubcaps going to be at where the tires are going to be at the hubcaps. I want that to look rustic. Like really, I'm sorry, rusted. So I do the Mod Podge with cinnamon just on there to give the truck a little bit more texture, a little bit more dimension to look a, like a little bit more real and not too plasticky. So I do that to the hubcaps. I do that to the front bumper. I do it to the back bumper, the Mod Podge and cinnamon part. And then I'm going to go in and I am going to give it more coverage of the Folk Art Copper Color. And I mean, when I say that I'm going to go in, I go heavily around the truck. And it's not, and you see how it looks like it's just sitting on there. I don't like the way it just looks like it's sitting on there. And it just, I don't know. So once I do that, I had this idea because I'm dabbing up and down. I grab a sponge and I take my greenish aqua blue color. And I'm going to dab the sponge up and down to blend in with the folk art copper color and i like the way that looked way better so i play back and forth with the the blue green color and the copper color just to make it all blend up inside the truck as you guys can see you see how that looks to me that looks way better Now our truck needed some tires and I had a bunch of like little things that I was going to go back and forth by but I've had these little wood rings and these little wood half beads in my stash. The wood beads fit perfectly inside the wood rings so it was perfect. So I paint our wood rings in black and then I'm going to paint the half beads. I painted them the same color as the truck mixed with like the copper, the green and all that but then I do go in with some the mod podge and cinnamon i do put some rust on the hubcaps as well here i'm just taking the headlights and i'm painting them black i do change that up and i do go coat them over with some mod podge and cinnamon just to give it more rust around our truck so those are rub-on transfers from dollar tree and i just to it like i cut out two little pieces that look like florals and then i ended up cutting i don't know where the footage went but two little pieces of craft sticks into rectangular shapes and I painted them in the color chestnut and transferred the rub-on transfers onto them. So those would be our license plates. So I popped the headlights in. We're going to start assembling our truck together. I popped the headlights in. Um, I had to like really push them in through there since I did coat them with the Mod Podge and cinnamon. They were a little bit thicker than what they were, you know, coming out. I take our little wood ring and I pop it right on our wood bead our half wood bead and that makes our whole little tire and hubcap set to complete and I do that for all four of them and then I start to glue our tires onto our truck literally they fit so perfectly all I had to do was add a little bit of glue and just hold it right in place and it stood right on there and it fit so good then I take our little license plates that we made and I glue one to the front of our truck and then I glue one to the back of our truck. Then I am going to make the, not the bed, like the rails of the back of the truck. Not make, I'm sorry, put together. So those are just like little mini craft sticks that I stained with some antique wax and the copper paint. And I glue them two to one side with like little pieces holding it up. And then I do the same thing to the other part as well. And that makes our little truck complete. And then we decorate it. And I'm making this a little flower truck. So to make everything matching our tier tray, I add some Spanish moss in the back. And then I take my leftover florals and greenery that I've had. You know, I save every time I make a project. I always save like the extras that I have. And I'm just playing with it until I 
like the way it looks and that is it okay so this next one i have this pattern that i printed out from i just searched it online and it's of a, um, a pattern of a seed packet and i'm taking different cardstock pieces and then that green glitter one i'm gonna use the white part i didn't have no plain white cardstock so i go around and i trace the seed packet on our cardstock and i'm gonna do this for every sip every different piece of our cardstock because i'm gonna make a bunch of different pattern seed packets this one was so inexpensive that's what i love about it how inexpensive it was i cut out our seed packet shape and then i am going to take a craft stick or ruler whatever you guys have and i'm just going to crease it where the lines crease it on the on the lines that where we have to fold our seed packet to, to assemble it now i'm gonna see i've had this this one in my stash like this image of the seed packet pattern i'm gonna see if i can find it again online but i just had this one like for a while now but if not i'll see if i can like link a seed packet a free seed packet um stencil basically or printable down in my description box so i'll definitely try that out so as you guys can see i'm just taking the craft stick just to help me make the creases where i'm gonna fold it all up and i'm gonna just use some of my elmer's glue just to assemble our seed packet together what i love about this one you could make so many and is an inexpensive pretty uh it's like a pretty project you could add on a tear tray or just loose pieces around your decor so just watch you guys just watch like how i'm gonna assemble it so i try to um find um cardstock pieces that kind of just fit like the tear tray set that i'm making here now the glitter one like i said the glitter one i'm using the glitter part of the inside and the white part on the outside since i didn't have no plain cardstock and that one is plain i did two of them like that so you guys are going to see how i do decorate those ones so i'm going to grab my stamps from dollar tree again and i am using a stamp pad for this you guys i'm not using the paint for this and i'm just going to stamp on those floral images and i'm really liking the way like this stamping it like looks I, i'm digging it and i've never really worked with stamps like that so i think i'm gonna buy some more stamps and try to incorporate it into more projects now just to give our seed packet a little bit of color i took a sponge with that blue color paint i'm just dabbing up and down and i just felt it made it look a little bit more rustic i did that i did the blue color in this one and the second one the seed packet i did it with um the hazelnut color by waverly chalk paint so I did try to incorporate a little bit of our colors that we've been using throughout our projects into these seed packets as well. So once I had all our seed packets all assembled, I have like this little tag shape. It's like a tag. What is that? Is that like, it's not cardstock. I forget what it's called, but it, that's kind of like the, the texture, like, you know, like that's found in like the notebooks. And I just cut out some label looking pieces and i'm gonna attach them to those seed packs now our card stock seed pads i had found these images online i printed them out you guys i don't have no expensive printer i have a cheap little printer so i just cut out those images and i love how rustic they looked and i just glued them right onto the front of our other seed packs so since this is tear tray decor, I wanted something to put our seed packs in. And I have this little crate that it's from the dollar, like the crafter square section. And I'm just going to reuse it. It's already painted with antique wax. I'm sorry, stained with antique wax. So I'm going to just grab my plaster color chalk paint. And I just went, you guys, about a new plaster color chalk paint because I was running out and it was all thick and everything. <laughs> and I did a heavy brushing all over this little crate. Now, I wanted to incorporate our stamping into this. So I grabbed my stamps and I just started stamping all over the crate. I'm telling you, I need to get more stamps. All I know is I'm going to get more stamps, you guys. And for summer and for fall, I'm not, well, I'm jumping the gun. 
for spring and for summer i'm gonna just try to do like a bunch of like project with the stamps because i love the way they look now i also attached on there um a little cut out what are those called embellishment i don't know what it's called but it's like those little watering can wood cutouts from dollar tree i painted it with the blue color and just wrote the word bloom on there and i just attached it to the front of our little crate I take our seed pads with some Spanish moss and I stick them right inside of our little crate. And I love the way this came out. I want to make more just to add all around for decor. It's so stinking cute. Okay, you guys, grab different pieces of craft sticks. I didn't have <laughs> craft sticks that were all the same size, but I needed them to be the, like the same size. So I cut my jumbo craft sticks and cut them down. So I'm just taking my blade or knife. And I'm very dangerous. I never realized how close I'd be cutting to my fingers. And I'm just going to cut them down. And then I'm going to shape them as arrows on one side. And then on the other side of our little arrow, I wanted it to look like broken wood. So I just cut out like little pieces on the end of it. And I do this. I take four pieces of craft sticks and make them all into the same shape and into the same size. Now I take some antique wax and I went a little bit heavy on it. I know I always do. I'm very heavy handed for everything and I'm going to stain all four of our craft sticks. So obviously I'm painting it on and then I'm going to take the baby wipe and I'm going to wipe it right off. I grab a dowel and I stain it as well because that's going to be our stand. I cut out some words on my Cricut and I'm going to do some reverse stenciling and paint over it with some Java chalk paint. And then I will weed those letters right off. So I needed a base and I wanted to do something a little different. So I grab, I'm on a silicone mat. I grab my hot glue and basically I'm doing like a blob of paint. So it could look like a little puddle. And then I'm you just I have my coffee grounds. This is for my coffee that morning. I put it in a little container. They are dried up though. Make sure they're very dry. And then I'm gonna just take some Elmer school glue and I'm gonna mix it all up. And this is gonna give me the fake dirt look. So I set my fake little dirt to the side so it could dry up a little bit because I wanted to have like clumps as well inside of it. And I just take a sponge with some black. And then I take the Java color chalk paint. No, I'm sorry. I take burnt umber. And with a sponge, I just start painting over my hot glue. So it could also look like dirt. Right now, <laughs> sorry you guys. And sorry if you guys get offended. Right now it looks like a little piece of dookie, if anything. And I hated it. Even putting that in there. But I, it just looking at it right now, I'm like, oh lord. So I'm grabbing more hot glue. And I center the hot glue in the like right in the center and i'm gonna add my dowel in there and i'm just using a whole blob of hot glue anyways because we are going to cover it and it, it's hot glue our base is hot glue so i added some tacky glue and i'm taking my coffee grain my coffee grounds and as you guys see i let it sit for a little bit with the armor's glue because it gave me those clumps and it's not just like dust basically and i'm just going to start to attach well, glue on the coffee grounds onto there. So our little base looks like a little pile of dirt. I don't know. It's cute. I thought it was cute. And it's a, a little bit different. I've always, like I said, I've always made direction signs for my tier tray decor. And I wanted to make something a little bit different. Like I said, I'm going out of the box with this one, you guys. Let me know if you guys like today that I'm just changing it up a little bit or stick to what I know. And it does get messy, you guys. It really does. Um... I take my puffy paint, my brown puffy paint, so I want it to look like muddy, wet, soil, dirt, and I'm just going around the edge of it, and I put a little bit over our coffee grounds. I don't cover it completely because I want those coffee grounds to show since it is fake dirt. And then I just go, you know, I play back and forth with it. Now, once I have my coffee grounds and my little base all done, I lay it down. And I just glue on our little arrow pieces. And I don't glue them straight, like going straight. I glue 
you know, one a little tilted and just whatever. Some people have OCD and they're going to need, I have OCD in different ways. They're going to need their signs like very, very straight. I don't like mine looking straight. I like mine's like going all like different ways and like, you know, like to a little tilt. I feel like that makes it look much cuter. I want it to cover up the spaces in between um, each arrow. So I'm grabbing some greenery again. And I'm just going to take the stems of the greenery and I'm going to just glue them on to our little dowel. So it, to me, it looked like, you know, like a garden. Like, yes, this is like a little garden stand. But it also looked like a little tree trunk. Like if like the plants are growing out of the dirt and onto our little sign. I don't know. I thought it was cute. Um, to add a little bit more embellishment, I'm grabbing one of those Dollar Tree like little pots. I'm going to just glue it laying down onto our base. And then I grab some of our full dirt and I glue some of our little full dirt inside of the pot. And I add a little bit of puffy paint so it could, you know, all tie in with the fake dirt. I add my last little piece of greenery to the bottom. And that was it. I love, love, love how this came out. Let me know what you guys think. Okay, you guys, I have another Dollar General 10 cents piece that I grabbed after Christmas. And I'm going to start off and I'm going to stand as I'm going to try to stand all the lettering off. Surprisingly, it came out easily because I'm going to do more reverse stenciling. I don't even know if that's what it's called, but more re I'm going to say reverse stenciling. And I wanted to have that that color, like basically the raw wood color underneath. So I sand it all up and then I had cut my images using my Cricut. Like I said, you guys, you guys could use stickers. Stickers would be perfect for projects that you're reverse stenciling. And I transfer on my decals. So it just said, it says, I'm going to put um, spring, flowers, and bloom. Just a couple spring words. And I did them in different fonts as well. So I paint our first tier. With my ivory color chalk paint. I paint my second tier. With that. Like greenish bluish color. I don't even know what color it is you guys. I just made a mixture of color. Um, with that color. And then I'm going to paint our third tier. With some hazelnut chalk paint. Now. I paint them up. And like I said you guys. I don't let everything completely dry. I just weed out the words. I love, I'm telling you, I'm loving like the way that like, the raw wood cut like tone is looking. So anyways, <laughs> I get, I get so off track, you guys. It's so crazy. So I weed off the words and then I just take that plaster color chalk paint and I'm just going to do a dry brush around like the outer borders of our little tear sign. Now, I was going to leave it like that, you guys, but honestly, it was like a little too plain for me. It's beautiful how it is. Don't get me wrong, but I needed it to just have a little something extra. And I grabbed my Dollar Tree rub on transfers and I just transferred them right on to our little sign just randomly. Just in, I do some like on the front side of our sign and then I do some around the edges of our sign. And that was it for this one, you guys. I love how this came out, and I made it for under $2. That's even better. Let me know what you guys think. Another quick and easy one, you guys. We're going to use that Dollar General little sign, 10 cents. Like I said, we're going to take off that little polar bear, and I'm actually going to save it for Christmas, even though it's so far away. But I love to save like little embellishments like this. That's the word, embellishments. That's the word I was looking for. Now I flip it around. I remove those staples. I'm going to sand it up just to remove those holes. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to paint this with my ivory color chalk paint. Now I cut some images. I'm sorry, some words with my Cricut. So basically I'm going to basically like a stencil. And the first one I did was mark it. And I painted that with that bluish greenish color paint that we use throughout the whole video and as you can see i'm going up and down i'm not trying to like brush it like swipe it side to side 
And then I just remove the vinyl. And I did this for some other words. I ended up cutting all my words individually because I did not want it. I didn't want to make a big mess. Let's be real. I didn't want to make a big mess. But I cut out fresh flowers. And then I also cut out stems, blooms, and seeds at the bottom. I did some dry brushing with the color hazelnut around the edges. And that was it for this one, you guys. I love these little pieces, how they came out, each and every one. Okay, you guys, our last one. We're going to take this scrap piece of wood. And I'm going to paint the front of it white. Now, when I have it painted, I'm going to stain the sides with some antique wax. And I'm going to stain the back as well. But I'm going to leave this little bit of cuteness inside of here. Because my little special helper, my three-year-old, wanted to help me stain it. Some, pe some people appreciate the cuteness. But I just had to leave it in here. Because I did not do all the work by myself. And he watches mama too much. Because look at him. Wipe that antique wax off once he paints it on. Isn't that so stinking cute? Yes, his hair, there he is, his hair is always up in the way, he has those really, really curly locks. So I found this image on Google, and I it was so beautiful, I just printed it out on my printer, and I cut up the edges a little bit, and then I'm going to take my Elmer School glue, and I'm going to glue it right to the front of our sign. There was no bubbles, no wrinkles, and went on there perfect. I once I had it glued on I smoothed it out and I had to sand the edges up to give it that nice clean look so I took my nail filer and going down you know downwards I take off all the extra paper all around it and that was it I love how simple and expensive and easy this was to make <laughs> so much fun creating these and i hope you guys enjoyed remember if you like what you see don't forget to like share and subscribe and turn on that bell notification to be notified when i post my next video thank you to my returning subscribers for all the support and for my new subscribers as well i appreciate all of you so so much and as i always say this world could throw you twists and turns but always make good choices to the next one you guys